is joined to this is <laughs> our weekly our cryptocurrency roundup yeah well <laughs> The well, podcast Elliot, isn't working as out, you guys. know, as you so, know, we got to find new ways to supplement the income and most <laughs> catching on fire news is that the wall is not being built. Mexicans are coming galore. We need to build more <laughs> moes. <laughs> We're just trying to stay ahead of the trends, my friends. Yes, yes, yes. We're trying to stay one step ahead of you know what we expect the future to look like. <laughs> well here's what actually happens at the beginning of these episodes we give it till about 1105 for people to trickle in and then we kind of do our little intro and boom it's a show these are where the commercials would be if we were actually important yeah <laughs> Let us know if you want us to sponsor you most. We'll do it. But they're open on Mondays. <laughs> we'll do it for free, chicken. Uh, all right. And then, uh, Mike, you already announced this on our sub, right? I yeah, I tagged. Uh, general. I didn't group. put in the announcements, but I put it in general. All right, that's cool enough. Yeah. <clears throat> Fantastic. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. or, or one of the other groups we've talked a lot of trash about. Like, it, you know, we're just being as honest as we can. And sometimes people don't like that. Oh, did any of you guys grab the substratum story that was floating around yeah. with the... With the... But you could speak about it though, right? Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> no, bro, own it. Screw it. You're speaking the truth. It's a real scam. You you could be anti something if it's a scam. So, if you guys are exposing it, go all out. All right. That's what this is about. That's what this is about. <laughs> <laughs> Your host, Brent Philbin. Nah, let, we'll, we'll go ahead and give our proper introduction at this time. Um, as some of you may know, we are the Crypto Basic Podcast. We do a weekly roundup here in the R Cryptocurrency Discord server, kind of discussing the top stories of the week in that uh, subreddit. So my name is Mike. I'm here with Brent and Kareem. Hi. Hello. I, I always consider this like flagship warm up for the week. Like it's kind of let's 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 test the let's go to the public. Let's see what the subreddit has to say. And, you know, the best stuff usually ends up on our on our initial level research for more. All right, so since we are basically done uh, crapping on Stratum, Brent, why don't you talk to us about Tron? Just to be clear, I don't. I don't think. I think we said something along the lines of like this could possibly be them using their money to buy something real. <laughs> there's That's a chance not really this could like work positive. out. Positive. I don't want. Yeah, I don't want to like, give the impression that we were like, oh, it's good that now. They not fuck this up. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it was like. <laughs> yeah, but full context. Mm 
Brent, I want to pause you real quick. I, I, I want to stop you here because when I was envisioning this, I kind of liked the idea. In a way, it sounded like a tournament for, you know, development and, and these should be popular. And, you know, and we have a lot of experience in poker tournaments with poker rooms changing guarantees or doing things along this lines. And basically what it is, it's it's a lack of understanding that people are committing resources and time to participate in your event that you're hosting and what we're going to see here is that when you just change the rules of an event that you schedule that's like really frustrating but go ahead <clears throat> well well so they changed the minimum payout down by 20% is what I'm I'm understanding here does, does that mean that they actually by by yeah, oh, they two twenty percent. Yeah, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. They reduced it by eighty percent down to twenty percent. Um, does that mean the other winners received more? So, but the the prize pool technically is supposed to say the same, allegedly. Okay. So security token offering token, perhaps. Right. Brent, uh, did you stumble upon anything? Didn't they like not pay out the full amount last time around or something like that? Don't they already have a history of not like Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
dude, as a side note, I, I kind of wanted to two cents on this. Let's assume, let's all assume for five seconds that we don't, you know, let's say Tron isn't always scamming, right? So even if just from an, from a, like, we are just changing the payouts perspective, it seems like a really bad decision in this specific scenario because, okay, maybe if we were dealing with individual consumer level something and you change a 5K price to a 1K price, for most consumers, it's still pretty good to win $1,000. But you're talking about teams that are developing applications. Like a thousand dollars isn't going to do anything. Five K is already. I'm not trying to sound snobbish, but like, okay, it's an okay price, but it's like Kim, making it so that a totally bunch of people fine win a thousand. You know, like a bunch of people winning a thousand for developing. An How far would a thousand dollars go for our podcast? And we we just use our voices and and clip it. My see, my interpretation of this is that it, they're almost more concerned with the air. They, I'm assuming they paid in Tron, right? So oh, they're, they're more. Co- oh, interesting. <laughs> okay well here's the problem i have with this uh, uh, that you haven't even mentioned yet if i google tron trx winners list it's just like oh the christmas sharing campaign the incentive plan winners list the tron foundation here's the winners list and it's just like it, it, it's almost like they've searched engine optimized like this to not be able to be found either it's like pretty ridiculous <laughs> Well, okay, before we judge Tron too harshly, let me shit on them for one more story and then we can really judge them. Watch this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so the, ne- <laughs> the next story is because uh, <laughs> you're done with that one, right, uh, Brent? This is a good time to move on. All right. Let's do it. So you guys know that Tron and BitTorrent, um, you know, Tron bought BitTorrent, and now they are saying that they're going to release a token. And they talked about the idea for the token, and it actually sounded like a good idea. So uh, this magazine, um, uh, Magazine Breaker is what the magazine is called. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was I was definitely going to get to that, but I can no, yeah, I could do that now. And actually I was going to mention um the guy that they interview in this article is actually the guy that had the initial idea cuz they're talking to somebody who was an executive at BitTorrent. Um he was the chief strategy officer for like 10 years, okay? So uh he when he was tasked with hey, you should start looking at the crypto world because that's where all the money is. 
that this is kind of an internal idea that they had to have a token which monetizes file sharing. And the way that he describes it is that it helps prioritize the best internet connections and then they become better seeds and stuff like it's a good idea to monetize and incentivize, uh, you know, sharing and torrenting and making the system better. So, uh, last week, okay. So that's when they're going to create the token. Um, and by the way, the total amount of computers that are on the BitTorrent network, according to this article is hundred million, which really shows you the scale. That's pretty amazing. You know, hundred million computers. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's global, which is amazing. Right. Um, so anyway, that'll, that'll keep going over time, of course. So Tron token holders are going to get a share of the BitTorrent token on top of that. So this has been boosting the price of Tron, of course, because the token sounds like a good idea. You're going to get some if you're owning Tron. So this magazine tracks down this guy, Simon Morris, who, <clears throat> as I mentioned before, used to work. And he basically saying this will never work on the Tron uh, system. So I'm actually going to be reading a bunch of quotes, guys, here. And I know normally I don't like just to read directly from the article, but some of these quotes are really good. So I, I don't want to change his uh, word. Uh, first, he says that BitTorrent initially looked at crypto only because it was a bubble. He admits and that it was just a good way to get money. But the, the more they looked into it, he saw utility. Um, okay, but here's now he's being asked about Tron. He says, quote, but what's very clear is that they're going to say that they're going in the same direction um, because that's what Tron does. It's basically a marketing machine layered on a very thin veneer of technology. Jesus. Okay. Now the guy. Exactly. And now this guy, when BitTorrent got bought, he actually went to China to visit the operate the Tron operations because of course he's the chief strategy officer. The company just got bought by Tron. So he's going to go over there. He meets with Justin and apparently they talked about a, a bunch of things. <laughs> and this, that's when this guy decided like, I don't have a future here, but so here, but here are some of the quotes. All right. Quote. He has a very nice personality from a marketing point of view. He doesn't have a technical bone in his body. He wouldn't understand technically anything. But the approach that bothered me was the very sort of Trumpian approach. If you get caught in a lie, the answer is you double down on the line. And it was endless doubling down on lies that made me think I wasn't going to be a fit. Whoa. So go ahead, Mike. Oh, I, I'm just blown away. I mean, this is it's one thing to to kind of suspect these things. It's one thing to like to kind of throw stones from, you know, our you know, homes in Florida, but it's another thing to like listen to a mega tech person out of meetings, just being like, and eh, nah, this guy is just doubling, constantly doubling down on lies. Like what? <laughs> like, <clears throat> yeah but here's uh, yeah i agree with you brent i was actually going to mention and this was part of tron's defense they're like hey listen this is a disgruntled employee however um this is where reputation is relevant right and why whenever we talk about reputation being put on blockchain it's cool but this is i'm talking about real world reputation here now this is a guy who was the chief strategy officer for bittorrent that means that his career path has options he actually has a lot of options and future alternatives or whatever if you leave a company and you say something like this something scathing like this and you can't back it up your reputation is going to take a massive hit. Why would anybody want to hire you? The only way you could get away with saying it. So, yes, you're right. There is a bias here, but there's also a reputational way behind <clears> it. That <throat> if this was a lie, it would be super costly. And it's almost like only 
uh, foreseeable that somebody would say this if they're like, if they feel comfortable saying it and backing it up and, and everything, you know, put your name on it. Like, yes, this guy's a scammer. He doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, uh, a, a couple of more quotes before we finish off here. Um, uh, the guy says that he talked to Justin about the whole plagiarizing code and the fact that, you know, Tron had caught plagiarizing. And this guy was basically saying, look, here in Silicon Valley, you know, pretending that you never plagiarized that code's not going to really fly. What you should do is just admit it. You were young, whatever. Just be like, hey, listen, sorry, whatever that happened. That was dumb. But now we're here to work on some serious tech. And this is the quote. His reaction was to say, we have come to consensus that this did not happen and we have moved on. Well, he, no, no, no. They, they have 21 validator nodes that he chose, right? <laughs> I mean, this, yeah, it, it, Jesus. But this is internal too. This is him talking to the guy who runs the company that his team just bought. This is not like public relations or whatever. That means that he really has internalized it. But yeah, or or like or he's so committed that even at the highest level, that's how he's playing it. And then the And then the, the last quote in the article that I thought was worth mentioning is that he's saying ahead of time, the idea of the BitTorrent token will 100% not be able to run on the Tron blockchain. And his quote is, you hear all this bullshit out there. Oh, it does 10,000 transactions a second. It's all crap. We were going to melt Tron, literally destroy it. And... The last thing he says is his prediction, all right? And this is where you can really judge him, but his prediction is that ultimately what will happen is that the BitConnect token will be ran on the... I mean, sorry, the BitConnect... The BitTorrent, <laughs> the BitTorrent token will ultimately be ran in the centralized uh, server controlled by Tron, and the Tron will just try to spin it like it's a lightning network for Tron or something. But he was just basically uh, saying, like, look, we were there. There's 100% that blockchain couldn't handle what it, what would be needed. Which, by the way, makes sense because I don't think a lot of blockchains right now could handle the traffic of BitTorrent. We're talking about arguably the most successful decentralized project on the planet right now, other than, the, like, the internet itself. Hmm. Or they're an easy target for a crazy sociopath liar. I mean, that's kind of how this works, right? Like, we've always, like, kind of in a lot of ways. And, you know, that's what they prey on weak individuals. And you can prey on weak companies just as well as an individual, right? Nah, yeah. Look, and just to be clear, I, what we said from the beginning, just because they had so much money, there's a chance that if he decides, if Justin's son looks at his future and says, holy shit, I'm just going to keep playing this game where I do like Ponzi scheme like things. And eventually he's not going to be able to make a bigger level game because he's going to run out of, po of possibilities and it's going to blow up. And I said, maybe, maybe he uses this money to try to buy a real project and create real tech and salvage something. And then that's, I, that's as much credit as I've, as I've given this dude since I've decided that he's a scammer. So, you know, no regrets. Ooh, bullish or bullish. It's smirker communist. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Do we vote? Do we vote on there, my, uh, mm-hmm. Brent, or no? Um, but I, I don't want to vote first. I want the audience to vote. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right. My my reason for voting bullshit is because like there's just like so many ways this statement can be not true, in my opinion. But but as a side note, I wanted to say why I voted bullshit because I hadn't seen the article. Uh, but I voted bullshit because I was like, bro, if Putin and his buddies are going to try to buy Bitcoin, they're not going to do it through the central bank. They'll just buy some Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's just so many like little ways this, this could be wrong. <clears throat> the new cast circular logic yeah the story of how terrible have we railed on modern journalism all right this here's episode, my thing guys Did here's my thing already <laughs> honestly rabble, rabble, rabble. if modern journalism if russia was buying bitcoin there's no way that i would accurately get a good version of that story right like think about like the telephone game that you know we've played as kids the more points of failure between the two points, the less accurate the story is going to be. I'm not going to get good news from Russia. Like, that's just not going to happen. No. And listen, it in the a more important layer here is how this was completely manufactured. This is the power of the internet because you have all of these things that like, you can design a website to make it look like whatever you want. So you can look like a journalistic institution when in reality you are just a group of bloggers that are sharing opinions. Like this is. <laughs> right so real journalists though are supposed to make an extra step you know what i'm saying so like and that's ultimately where you we have to give at least a little bit of credit to like you know real newspapers or 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 whatever but i mean this the fact that this can blow up and it just gets reported as real news, and then you have Reddit, and then you have everything, and people just read headlines. And <clears throat> obviously, not. Mm. 
the voice of reason. No, they're not reputable, clearly, because this shouldn't have gotten through. <laughs> Good stuff, Brent. Well, that Monero community is pretty funny. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> And because your all-time highest voted post is uh, Fiddy or somebody. Yeah, Fiddy. <laughs> Fiddy in a oh, what was the Fiddy thing? Oh. There so was a lot of Fiddy Monero stories in the same period. All right. We did it at least two or three times on the show, I feel like. Well, I have... <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a question for you guys. Are you familiar with Cryptopia? Unfortunately, yes. And are you familiar with online hacks? Those uh, no, not Ramon, particularly. You could, can see where this is going. Online hacks, Cryptopia. It's hmm. been hacked, gentlemen. Tuesday morning, today. That's today. For those of you that are listening right now. Breaking news, Cryptopia sent a letter to its customers saying that they've been recently hacked yesterday, um, and they're putting the exchange in maintenance mode. Uh, they've contacted the police in New Zealand and the high-tech crimes unit because apparently it's a large enough sum of money, too, that they said it was a significant uh, loss, but they didn't clarify anything about how much or what. So anyway, it feels like this is going to be... A year with a lot of hacks and 51% attacks and all kinds of things like that, gentlemen. <laughs> Sorry, Brent posted the Kevin Hart picture out of nowhere. I was not expecting. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. No, they haven't. They just reported to the police, and this is literally breaking, so we don't have any info. Unfortunately, this is something we've predicted several times. Um, unfortunately, I've had to use Cryptopia on more than one occasion. Uh, I've, I chose to use Cryptopia because I was investing in shitcoins, and uh, fact remains, the user experience was pretty terrible, um, and they basically were very inefficient with you know listings and there was always a lot of problems behind the scenes when i'm in discord servers of other projects that were listed on there and you know trying to listen to their version of like trying to deal with cryptopia was always a real big hassle and this is something i believe we predicted several times in the show um i hope nobody directly uh close to us is affected by this my game Right. Is that better? All right. Okay. Uh, lost my train of thought, but hey, Cryptopia has always been lame, and unfortunately, I, I think we've predicted this. And uh, you know, I, I hope that some people get some of their money recovered. I just don't really see how it happens.
so Tyler, to answer your question real quick, we don't know how much was uh, hacked yet. Um, they haven't released the numbers. They said it was a large sum. This just happened this morning. And uh, yeah, but you know what? I will say this as a side note. Doesn't the fact that they're mainly based in New Zealand give you more faith in the fact that if it was an egregious violation of consumer trust, that they're more likely to punish? Like, you know, I would still rather be in a, an exchange that's based in Germany, New Zealand, Canada, U.S. than like, uh, you know, China. Uh, well, I don't know about Malta. It's, that's Malta's complicated. I, but I was I, thinking I'm more like Asia, you. South America. I'm trying to hear you on this conversation, but I don't really know where you're trying to go. Yeah. Oh, all right. So, so New Zealand is a tightly regulated space. That that well, was a, it's a it's a it's a more modernized country with more regulated. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a more like Western style government. Let's gotcha. See. <laughs> there, there is one shit coin that i'm still a part of that uses cryptopia and um this one in particular said that um they did not notice any movement in the core wallets that cryptopia has and they believe that they are personally are safe but that's the only thing that i know of and it's one of many on this site so Well, I mean, there's so many attack vectors, right? Like through a hack, like if it were a legit hack, you know, what did they take? They're, you know, usually they're not going to get everything, right? So. All right, so from one first world country to another, Mike, <laughs> tell us about the U.S. congressman. Yeah, so um, a Democratic congressman in Florida, Darren Soto, um, was recently interviewed and said security laws can be very intense and hurtful to the markets unless, they true, unless they're truly a security. Overall, we hope to establish jurisdiction and classification so we can bring confidence and clarity to the market. So... Um, basically saying that most of these cryptocurrencies are not security and they shouldn't require the SEC regulation. Um, the article kind of started off with, actually, let me get the article. Guys. Do, do, do. Yeah, hey, Mike, uh, this was the guy, I think uh, in the, we looked a little bit at something like this. This guy submitted a bill with a Republican congressman too, right? It was like a bipartisan bill that they submitted. Uh, yeah, I actually remember being surprised he was a Democrat for some reason. And um, I remember talking about that, but it, it, these stories, unfortunately, the names are going to get mixed up for me. Right, if right, we've right. covered him, um, I don't personally recall it, but I would definitely trust your opinion way more than mine. Well, I would like there to be multiple uh, Congress people submitting bills to sure. not regulate crypto, but I think it might be just. Yeah. OK, continue. Though. So, so anyways, um, you know, the the problems lately have been like, how do you classify? crypto what is bitcoin where does it fall and you know the irs wants it to be property and this the um cftc wants it to be a commodity and all these other you know people are pulling at it from different directions um and this particular legislation was meant to exclude it from securities laws and um i don't actually have an update on where they are but a similar bill was passed in colorado recently and this i think this stands as a very good sign because we do not want to be regulated as security that brings a ton more issues um there are some that will be but you know we want that to be hand chosen in my opinion and not just a global blanket overall digital assets agreed I've, I definitely remember stories about some of the Coinbase guys were trying to 
Or I think CZ also was talking about this. Like th- that seems like a win for everybody. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go out on a limb here though and predict that there's gonna be a lot of internal pressure to try to have because you know the existing institutions are gonna try to get as much power as they can. So they would rather absorb an industry. And also on the private side, all of the companies or all of the corporate entities that have managed to get some kind of regulatory capture on the SEC are also going to prefer to have some type of control or influence over that. You know, so even like a lot of Wall Street is probably going to lobby to keep cryptocurrency regulated by the SEC because Wall Street has so much influence over the SEC. That's my guess. Like a preventable death, right? Brent, one of the uh, when you just gave that analogy with the self-driving cars, um, you just made me think about one of the critique points with Tesla that I've heard that is interesting that I don't really know which side of it I'm on is the idea that on the one hand, um, they are kind of they're pushing this technology out slightly early, which is good and bad. It's good in the sense that they're putting pressure on this to like they're they're making it popular, mainstream. Like yes, cars can drive themselves. But then I've also heard the critique that like you're putting out driverless technology out there and telling people like oh well it's not fully driverless, so don't just fully trust it, knowing that a lot of people, in fact most not a, most people but a lot of people are going to ignore those recommendations. And then if you do have those accidents or those decisions um, before that regulatory structure is in place, then maybe it could hurt. You know what I'm saying? So it's, uh, I don't know, it's it's interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm a fan of Tesla, obviously, but it's it's an interesting question. Yeah, 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 yeah. I test drove uh, the Model X. Not that I was about to buy it or anything, but I was with someone that was about to buy it. And uh uh, it was pretty sweet, man. Like you're, I was in the interstate, you press the button, like it literally is driving itself. It like accelerated when the car in front of me got out of the way. It, it can like change lanes, but just using the directional, it's kind of like, it's scary, but amazing. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. I've never, I've never been able to actually drive it or be part of the being driven part. But you know, when I rode in the, the SUV one, I forget what it's called. It was so sleek, so cool. It just, felt like a smart car right it felt like what a car should be or what we can expect cars to be in the near future yeah no doubt and and tyler here is saying that besides the risk of hardware failure and software bugs tyler i would say even with that because that's precisely what we're accounting for we're we're, when we look at error rates for some of these things uh and see i've heard this argument a lot like oh well self-driving cars if you make a little mistake I don't know. I don't know that people understand that these systems are designed specifically so that parts of it can fail without it being catastrophic. That's why, like, when you don't take your car to the mechanic enough, it's more likely to just break down on you, not like swerve off into like the brakes don't work anymore. Same thing with planes. There's hundreds, thousands of different parts in planes, but it's not like because one little thing breaks is going to damage. So, self driving cars, yes, sometimes things will go wrong, but the way they'll be designed is that when something goes wrong, it's going to take a very safe way of reducing speed or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like they're designed specifically to be better than humans. So they will be better than humans in every way. 
Yeah, redundant systems. Thank you, Tyler. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, or and you could even say, Brent, that a it's preferable to be in a strict regulatory environment that you know exactly what the regulations are than a apparently lax environment where you have total like ambiguity and not knowing what's going to be okay and what's not. And, you know, yeah, that's brutal. No, yeah, trying to run a business, like, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Here come the crypto lobbyists. Don't worry. <laughs> Hope so. Not every hero wears the cape. All right. And I think we, we, we do have one more story before the question and answer and stuff, right, Mike? Yeah. So I'm going to send this right now. So uh, Parity Technologies received a $5 million grant from the Ethereum Foundation. I thought this was particularly interesting because uh, I, I like to find positive news when possible. So um, Parity has been working on Ethereum similar to how Lightning Labs would work on Bitcoin. They're trying to help, you know, reach the off-chain solutions and make the entire network better. They were awarded the $5 million grant from the Ethereum Foundation, and they stated that the funding is for the scalability, usability, and security um, for the network, and they are working on Casper. Now, for those of you that may not fully remember, Casper is intended to be the proof-of-stake solution that Ethereum is going to switch to once they've fully tested it. Um, I found it to be kind of interesting that the way they mentioned that this grant, uh, it actually is, is awarded over a small, small amounts over a period of time and it's incentive based kind of like a contract of a sports player. And, you know, as soon as they reach certain milestones and the funds will get released and a certain, certain details are worked out. And, you know, I have no idea how complex that must be between, a, you know, two yeah. large tech companies, but I bet it's super interesting and, I'm excited for this eventual, you know, evolution of the space. <clears throat> yeah, this is why ETC started. That's right. Ethereum was like 300, I think, at the time, or probably higher than it was today. Right. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to see where it ends up. Imagine if jobs were set up that way. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I well, think there's a lot. That's why we really like it when development teams have plans that involve them bidding for the renewal of their contract to a treasury, right? Like IOHK does this. Uh, I believe that Zen uh, plans, I mean, Horizon eventually plans on doing that as well. So I love that because you're saying, we're going to keep competing and we're here for the long haul as long as, but like you're, you are accountable to the community. Absolutely. And that's the important part though, is that we're all in this together and every little person is working on it differently. And I, I've started to get a lot less concerned about, you know, 
Bitcoin or Bitcoin maximalism or these factors, these altcoins, it's all it's all an experiment, right? We're all experimenting with what digital assets can be. And I actually think we need as many of these experiments to be running. Hopefully, you know, we get the the best versions of it through all the experiments to rise to the top. Yeah, there's going to have to be a, a narrowing down. And I agree with you, Mike. That's the best way, you know, let all flowers bloom and then, you know, let the... In this case, I do take the, yeah, let's let the markets decide whatever's best, you know, and we never know how it's going to develop, but more alternatives is better. All right. Is there any other open questions that anybody's thought of? Is there anything that you want us to cover? We are going to act like we can cover inside of three minutes. Um, any questions you can jump on? Anybody want to hop on the mic and get in here with DJ Crypto Basic? Wicked, wicked. The the United the, three of us. Yeah, it's that's the team name. DJs are teams now, Brian. Get with the days, man. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't get out of the house much. <laughs> uh, all right, so it looks like we got nothing. <laughs> Rest in peace. I agree. Uh, let it be restful. This episode, I guess, if there are no questions or anything like that, you guys have anything? Any part? I mind? will say that I've been dabbling in the Lightning Network a little bit, and I think it's super, super cool. And I think we, I re-listened to the episode the two of you discussed, you know, on the Lightning Network, and man, I think it's really neat. Oh. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Weather in the scared. Storm Award. Oh, Weather in the Storm Award, yeah. <laughs> Weather in the Scam. <laughs> Weather in the Scam Award for the scam that has weathered the critique tron for the 12th consecutive year ah <laughs> uh, sorry <laughs> so yeah yeah it's if the timing is everything tomorrow uh yeah i would have changed my vote oh we got guys we're spoiling it we're spoiling it i think this is we've gone too far we're ex Yeah, all the Justins. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this week of the weekly roundup, RCC. This was the Crypto Basic Podcast. Please check us out at CryptoBasicPodcast.com. Subscribe or like us wherever you listen to your podcasts. And we'll be back next week, 11 a.m., ready to get more fun. Check out our Friday flagship and whatever else it is that you like about us. <laughs> <laughs> My man. All right. <laughs> Thank you for joining uh, We us, appreciate guys. some Justin Sun memes too. Lady His face is so punchable. Wait, we have come to the consensus that it did not happen. Good night. Good night.